Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Monday afternoon. I am Old Man Troy, joined by the Captain Nova youngster, Kevin Cunningham, a.k.a. Kid Cunny on Twitter, or you can find that youngster, Old Man, on Facebook. I mean, we've got a Facebook page now, youngster. But I had to call you Casanova because you're just such a sweet, loving husband. <laughs> that's, that's very true. Um, yeah, fun weekend this past weekend, just gallivanting with the wife and then, you know, tonight doing stuff. Um, so, yeah, just a uh, sweet, loving husband, as you said, Troy. Um, yeah, well, I, enjoy, enjoy your newlywed days. <laughs> We're coming up on a year eventually. Pretty soon, fairly soon. Because going to dinner, hanging out, gallivanting around, that's all good and well when you're first married. Wait wait till you're married long like me. Mm-hmm. Then it's like, do I really want to rush home? Because right. I'll have a big to-do list. Heck, mm-hmm. now with the technology, my list comes before I even get home. Stop and get this. Stop and get that. Did you do this? Can you do that? that that's what I get. That's mm-hmm. what I get. There's there's true love right there, youngster. Wait till you get to that point. Yeah. And you do it without complaining. So yep. my wife will listen yeah. to the show and I'll get in trouble for that. But no, all is good. <laughs> all is good. What's going on in Florida though there, youngster? We're, we just had like a nasty storm like twenty minutes ago and I thought of you immediately. Like this is like normal for a youngster. It was like that afternoon rainstorm you were talking about. Like it's yeah. been sunny all day, a little bit humid. Right. I was in one of my accounts in the back room, and I just heard, you know, just <laughs> downpour rain on on the metal roof. Right. And it literally, it was it was crazy, and it lasted five minutes. That was it. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, the youngster gets that every day. Now and now I know what he feels like. But that's yep. all that's going on over here. Yeah. Uh, today's little downpour was it, it was like literally a minute. I, I was walking my dog in the middle of it, and it started, like, sun showering, basically. Um, it, in Florida, that happens quite often, where it's basically sunny out, but somehow there's rain coming down on your head. Um, but it, it lasted, like, literally less than a minute. So it, that, that was the rainfall for today. This past weekend, it was supposed to be, like, 50-50 chance of raining, like, throughout the entire day. Um, and it rained for, like, four hours last night, and that was it. So... That's just classic Florida crap where, you know, it'll rain for 20 minutes during the day and it'll say, oh, 50% chance, 40% chance, scattered thunderstorm, and then nothing happens. Or, you know, some days it'll last for like two hours. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. It's going to be super hot for the next few months and there's going to be some rain. So, <laughs> Unless my Super hot in the Big playing. Ten right now, new, new commissioner. It is. We're going, to talk, um, we're going to talk about that on today's show. We're going to give a little baseball yeah. softball update, and then, bam, we're out of here. Let the listeners go, and then you can go gallivant with Mrs. Youngster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quickly for softball, um, the last Big Ten softball team uh, we said on last week's show is Minnesota. UCLA got out of that bracket. They played the juggernaut in Oklahoma in the uh, finals, and UCLA beat Oklahoma 2 to nothing. So the, there's your champion. And so much for Oklahoma's unbelievable dominance during the regular season. At the end of the day, if you don't get it done in the postseason, you know, it, it's to me, if you're a part of this Oklahoma team, uh, the way I would remember it is, damn, we had a really good team. Damn, we should have, you know, basically made history with the type of team we had and finished it off with a win and a championship, and we didn't. And that sucks. And th- that's how I always think of it. Like the unbeaten Patriots, like, cool for a regular season, but at the end you lost the Super Bowl. And these, you know, Kentucky college basketball a few years ago, undefeated regular season, got to like 38, 39-0, played Wisconsin in the Final Four, lost. It's like at the, at the end of the day, it's just a disappointment <laughs> if you don't close it out. Um, but it's, it's all based on expectations. But just wanted to give fans a little uh, update there. Um, UCLA kind of upsetting Oklahoma there. But you got anything there, Troy? Well, I can kind of relate it to my playing and coaching days because sometimes mm-hmm. people will call me like negative Nancy or uh, always a pessimist when I coached, but it's kind of along the, along the same guidelines. It's like, yeah, we had a great year, but we didn't fulfill the goals we wanted to. 
like, for example, I had a girls' high school team, and we literally had shirts made. And I don't remember the exact number of days. It was so many days equals Madison, which Madison is where the state tournament is played. And we really had expectations to make the state tournament. So I had these shirts made up. And we did. We advanced to the regional final. And we lost. Right. It was still a great, great year. And I, I didn't downplay what we had accomplished, but that wasn't our goal. And our goal wouldn't even been just to get to Madison. It would have been to actually compete for a state title. Yeah. But we didn't get there. And so, you know, I, I remember getting interviewed by the paper after the game, and I'm like, yeah, we had a great year. But I said this kind of a letdown. And I said, I know, I know the girls are let down. And, man, did people just run with that. And, well, you know, media, we're part of the media now. We're going to take everything Those pretty newspaper. literal. Those newspaper reporters, Troy, just terrible, terrible people. Yeah, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I remember the guy. He, he, was, he followed our team. He was like, like you, the high school beat writer. Right. So he was at a lot of games. It's just, and he didn't even misquote me, didn't do anything. It's just the way people read it. It's like, man, sure. can't you, like yep. one one parent said to me, can't you just be happy for the team? I'm like, I am happy for the team. Do you understand that these girls and our goal was to get to Madison? And you can ask any one of them. That's what we trained for. We didn't train to lose in the regional final. And, yes, right. we had a great year. And it's the farthest the team ever went. But that's not where we thought we were going to end. We thought we were going to Madison. And it wasn't a pipe dream. You know, you, you know what I'm talking about, Kevin. It, it wasn't one of those teams where, oh, if, if luck is on our side and the ball bounces right. No, this team was good. I, I was solid from front to back, had a really good goalkeeper. On that team, I believe seven girls went on to play college soccer. So that was a great team. That was probably the yeah. best team I had in high school, getting seven kids off of a high school team to go play college soccer. Now, it wasn't all Division One. A lot of it was D, D3, but I had a couple D2. No D1, yeah. but still, that's a good – seven of your starters going off to play college soccer. Yeah. That's why the expectation was we want to get to Madison. So, I just wanted to throw that out there that, that you know – Sometimes when, when you fall short, you can say, yeah, it was a great year. But if you legitimately have a team that should contend for a title, it's a disappointment. And you're heartbroken. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. I thought it was pretty relevant to Oklahoma. Yeah, I, I figured you'd have, you'd have something. Um, it, it's just all on expectation. Uh, like I said before, if you're Kentucky, if you're Duke, if you're North Carolina, if you're Alabama Clemson football, if you're Ohio State Michigan football, it's just you're expected to go to the college football playoff. You're expected to go to the final four. You're expected to go to the AFC, NFC championship game if you're, you know, whoever. Um, if you fall short of that in your career, if you're lined up and it makes perfect sense for you to make $90,000 a year, once you're set up in your profession and you only end up making 60, it's a disappointment. You're fine. You know, it, no, no one's going to cry about it and, you know, have this huge, crazy letdown. Oh my God, I, I suck. But at the end of the day, you didn't fulfill what you, what your potential earnings could have been. You know, it, just any random example, it's just at the end of the day, it comes down to expectations. And if that women's soccer team, Troy, um, your high school team, you, you know, you just expected it to be a 500 team and you hope to win one playoff game, but you made it to the regional final and you were knocking on the door of getting to state. That's a great year. That's phenomenal. You, your head is held high. If your expectation is to go to state and possibly win the whole thing and you don't even make it to state, then, yeah, it's a disappointment. <laughs> you know, that's, that's just – it's all on expectation. Um, so, like you said, very talented team. It, you know, expectation, make it to state, you barely miss out. It sucks. That's just <laughs> – that's the reality of it. Um, so, Softball, done and over with, kaput, as Troy <laughs> likes to say from time to time. Uh, baseball, uh, I talked about, I, I don't know if Michigan advanced at the time of last week's show. I don't think they did. I think they were playing last Monday night against Creighton as we were doing last week's show uh, to see who would move on in yes, that region. Yes, they were Michigan. playing, youngster, now that you brought that up in our pregame. They, yeah. 
that had not been decided yet. That's why we didn't mention that Michigan had advanced. Right. Because we didn't, it was in limbo. And we yep. had no idea. Yeah. So Michigan was the three seed out of that four team pod. Uh, Oregon State was the one, Creighton the two, Michigan the three, Cincinnati the four, Michigan and Creighton advanced to the final there, and Michigan won that. So they advance as a three seed. Again, there's only four seeds in a pod. Um, as far as other three seeds that made it, there was one. I'm trying to look at this pretty quickly here. Plenty of one seeds, of course. There were two three seeds. I think one two seed, and the rest were ones. Yeah, that's that's how it shook out. Um, the other three seed, Duke, ended up getting eliminated in the next round, the Super Regionals against a one seed in Vanderbilt. Uh, Michigan faced the same type of thing. Uh, the two seed, I'll get to Michigan in a second. Uh, the two seed, Auburn, the only two seed that advanced, um, they're playing right now. They're playing a one seed right now um, in a final game three. The other three seed that advanced to Super Regionals, Florida State, they upset LSU. So they're actually going to the College World Series for Michigan, for those that don't know. They were a three seed. They played number one UCLA. Um, that was in Los Angeles. And in a three-game series, Michigan actually won that two to one. So Michigan is in the College World Series. I think that's, that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, so as of right now, um, it's not perfectly set in stone. There are two games going on literally as we're doing the show right now. Uh, the rest of the bracket is set, but it's not configured as to who's playing who yet. Um, so we have no idea where Michigan would fall as of right now. We just know Michigan's in. Uh, Michigan's in, Vanderbilt a one seed in, Texas Tech a one seed in, Louisville's in a one seed, Arkansas, Ole Miss both one seeds, one of them's going to win in advance, Mississippi State a one seed, they advanced, um, and Florida State is that three seed that's in there too. But North Carolina, Auburn still playing, and then Arkansas, Ole Miss still playing. But in short, Michigan has <laughs> gotten out of Corvallis and gotten past Oregon State, gotten past Grayton, and then they played UCLA in a three-game set and won two to one. So they won game one by one run. They lost game two by one run. And then game three, they won four to two. Um, so fantastic run for Michigan to this point. Uh, again, talking hey, about Hey, you get hot at the right time of the year, and that's what you need. Yeah. That, yeah. We talked about that. expectations. And we never have, Troy and I never expect Big Ten baseball to get to a college world series. At least I don't. I'm pretty sure. No, Troy's Kevin. How many how many Big Ten teams were number one seeds? That would be none. I don't that even know if none. there were any two seeds. There might have been one two seed. There might have been, but yeah. Because it, you it, have, we, we're not going to beat we're not going to beat the horse again. We've done it on our show. If you want to find out and listen to what our thoughts on Big Ten baseball, which is not bad, it's just they're at a disadvantage. You can go to thegruelingtruth.com and find our old archive or Youngster, we've got a web page now. Youngster, old man, dot home, dot blog. However, there's no Go Big Shows on there yet, just because due to the timing of when it was made. And, you know, I have nothing else to do during the day. So I, I should be able to put all those old shows up. No, I'm, I'm being very sarcastic with that. But moving forward, uh, we'll be posting all of the shows. But go to thegruelingtruth.com as you can every week, and that's where you're listening now, and just go to the archives there. All of our shows are on thegroomingtruth.com. But, Kevin, it's a great run for Michigan. You get hot. Here it is. Are they expected to win even a game in the College World Series? Probably not. They're going to be the underdog. I I would highly doubt they're going to play Florida State. They're going to play another one seed. You rattled off a number of teams that are one seeds. That is normally what happens in in the College Baseball World Series. The one seeds advance. That 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 is just that is just part of human nature in in that tournament. It is normally one seeds. Now you'll get three sprinkled in every once in a while, like Florida State and Michigan, but you're rarely going to see them in the championship game. But hey, we got something to root for. We got something else to talk about next week. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> I, I know we've got a variety of fans. You and I are impartial to all schools. But I, I'm in a Big Ten group, and, man, the love-hate between Ohio State and Michigan doesn't matter what sport it is. I see these guys badgering back and forth on Facebook in this group. Ohio State, 
Michigan. Oh, I know you fans don't like each other, but go Wolverines. Represent the Big Ten in baseball. That is awesome. That's all I got, young yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a Ohio State football fan. I'll, I'll say that um, for the hundredth time on the show. But go Michigan baseball. <laughs> you know, I, I don't care. It, it's awesome that we get to talk about this this run. Um, so, oh, while we're talking, cool. is it, this just came to me because I, I didn't get to see it all, but I was watching the news this morning while I was drinking my coffee, and it, I, I swear it said D'Antonio nearing extension. I. I don't know if you heard anything about it. It was on the bottom. It was on the ticker. Isn't that something? I don't know. Yeah. Again, I was I was walking by, going to get my coffee, and I, I swear I saw D'Antonio nearing extension. That would be quite the thing for fire D'Antonio just a couple of years ago. Now they're looking to give him an extension, which I think is well-deserved should he get one. I thought I'd bring that up. I don't know why that came to my mind now. Um, I'm not seeing any breaking news for it. Um, let me see here. I mean, as of right now, I think he is, his contract goes up until 2023. Um, so, you know, he's not necessarily pushing for a new deal as far as, oh, my God, I might get, you know, this is my last year or the following year is my last year. Um, but you could be 100% correct. I, I'm just not seeing any breaking news on it. Um, but, yeah, I, wouldn't surprise me, and he's a very good <laughs> college football coach, as we've said on the show a hundred times. So I, you know, if they do that, fantastic. Um, our other show, we'll, we'll talk about Carson Wentz making thirty-two million a year and huge goblets of uh, guaranteed money. So uh, we do Troy and I do a number of radio shows. Um, like he said before, youngsteroldman.home.blog. You can check us out on Facebook. Youngster Old Man, uh, Twitter at Youngster Old Man. So I think you get the theme with Youngster Old Man. Um, that's where we do all our shows, you know, not just Big Ten stuff. But as far as um, baseball goes, I I think that's it. I, I, I guess for a schedule, there's nothing set in stone yet. Check out NCAA.com. They'll have it as soon as it's released. Um, you know, ESPN, Fox, CBS Sports, uh, places like that. Obviously will, but should be this this week. Uh, this week, maybe this Friday, it'll, it'll start. I'm, I'm not sure of the exact time. Bracket is not set yet. So soon we will know. And on next week's show, we will let the listeners know how Michigan is doing. Um, I'm not sure if they will be done at that point. They have to be. It, it goes into a double elimination. That's what the College World Series is. is it's a double elimination style. So set up into two different brackets. There will be four different teams in each bracket. So like Troy said, there will be, I'm sure, at least a couple one seeds. There basically has to be a couple one seeds <laughs> in there wherever Michigan is, whichever bracket they go into. But we will let you know on next week's show. Very cool stuff. The last thing on the docket for this quicker than usual show, but it is kind of that time of year uh, where we're somewhat waiting for football and basketball. Um, Big Ten in general, Jim Delaney. Uh, the he he's still technically the uh, the Big Ten commissioner, but he is stepping down at the end of this year. Um, his last day is January first, twenty twenty. So you know, at the end of literally this calendar year, he will be done. I thought he did just fine. Um, not going to get into literally every single thing he's done and whatnot, but certainly could have been worse in my opinion. Um, but new guy hired as of a few days ago now, uh, Kevin Warren is, he was, he is, I guess, technically still maybe, uh, the chief operating officer of the Minnesota Viking. And he is going to be the new commissioner realistically on January 1st, this upcoming January 1st. I think he starts, when does it start? I know it's in this article. Yeah. Begins the transition on September 16th of this year. Uh, so basically right when football season really gets going, like week two, week three. Um, so before college basketball, a couple weeks into college football, when you get those cupcake games out of the way, Troy, um, there were betting lines kind of released uh, for week one college football games for the Big Ten. Um, I'm sure for everyone. But Big Ten teams, I, I think literally all of them are favored by like double digits. 
Uh, there's no like crazy Wisconsin LSU type. Uh, we'll get into it, you know, once we really start talking college football. There is no huge marquee matchup um, that I remember seeing anyway for any of the Big Ten teams for week one. Um, but Kevin Warren is the guy. Um, there's a number of different things we could get into here, but realistically, he's the guy. He's been a part of the NFL um, as a whole for 20 years. Um, member of the NFL's Committee on Workplace Diversity. He is an African-American. Um, I only bring that up because it's just the reality, and it has people talking, and he is realistically, this is history, that he is the first Power Five conference commissioner to be an African-American. Um, so Jim Delaney was the conference commissioner since 1989. He is the sixth now. Warren is only the sixth conference commissioner ever in the Big Ten. And again, the first Power Five African-American um, commissioner for a Power Five conference. So, I'm going to interrupt you, yep. youngster. I was yeah. doing some internet searching. It was Mark Van Tony from Houston Rockets. Ah. <laughs> but yeah, you can see it. Like I said, cool. I was walking by quickly, and it was mm-hmm. scrolling on the bottom, so I couldn't tell. And I, I was already at the point where I'm like, I need my coffee. So I yeah. apologize. I didn't mean to get people all in an uproar, but it was Mark <laughs> D'Antoni from Houston. Fairly which similar is names. Very, very close, very close. <laughs> but I just, you know, I'm a new commissioner, Kevin. It's always yeah. one of those things, you know, you wonder, is this guy going to try to change the wheel? Or is he going to kind of just let it play out as, as it is? Mm-hmm. Some people want to come in and make their legacy right away. Other people want to come in and kind of, I don't want to say ride the coattails, but just kind of glide along with what is working. Because when you look at the Big Ten, Kevin, there's a lot of things I think that are working. And I I don't know if you look at the conference and say you need to make major changes to make the Big Ten more powerful in in the country. I mean, I I guess, you know, TV contracts would be one. I mean, I'm sure that's part of the commissioner's job, making sure that the deals are – Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say that's literally the only thing I can think of is that, like, for me personally here, um, and I don't know how it is in Wisconsin now, I guess, but the SEC network, and, again, I've moved to to Florida um, within the last, like, three years, so obviously the SEC network is easily available to me. Um, I don't know how much it is necessarily for the entire country. I know, like, ESPN has a thing with the SEC, um, I, I think the SEC just in general is more marketed across the country than the Big Ten is. So, like, maybe if there's one thing to really nitpick at, it's that, hey, make Big Ten Network more available, make more Big Ten sports more available to the entire country uh, than it is now. Like, that, well, that's maybe the only he thing listen really to our show, and maybe he'll listen to our college, our, our conference tournament. How we want more than two teams playing? We want a little round robin, Big yeah. Ten tournament for football. I right. think that would be cool, and I think it would could work. I really do. You take one and two, two two from one side plays one from the other. Bam, there you go. You can still end up with your top two seeds, your number ones yeah. playing each other. But when you look right. at these these divisions, Kevin, I mean, you look at it. You got Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State. One of, I mean, two of them are left out every year of playing yeah. for a Big Ten championship. And so, Michigan State. I mean, and Michigan State. I mean, you don't want to sit here and say, oh, it's not fair. And that's not where I'm going. It's just I think it would help the Big Ten when you're talking about college football playoff selection. If you had here. Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, one and two in that division – being able to play an extra game, especially when you're number two. Yeah, so you're adding two but, games. You're adding two games at the end of the day, two semifinal games, which every Big Ten fan will care about. They may not watch all 60 minutes, all three and a half hours of both games, but they'll care. Like, they'll care. Yeah, that I, think the yeah. I think the country would care. I think the country would care. It would be the first Power Five conference to have a semifinal for their own conference tournament. And you see the Big Ten somewhat pioneer, like 
very quickly here, not to cut you off again. Big Ten basketball is the first conference to go to a 20-game regular season schedule. The ACC is following that. I think that starts this year. Uh, the Big Ten started that a year ago, this past season. And I love and, it. One year in, yeah. and I loved it. I loved right. it. I think the Big Ten is willing to go out on a limb and try things, um, and I think that's awesome. And I, I think that very shortly here, before I let you go, um, Kevin Warren, I, I think from everything I read about him, he knows what he's doing um, as far as the NFL is concerned and running an organization and running a business. Um, you know, he had, according to this, uh, this article, a critical role in all business, financial, legal, and operational aspects related to U.S. Bank Stadium, which is the Viking Stadium. Uh, he's more than just, hey, I'm the head honcho here, and, you know, you do this, you do that. He's a big part of everything, whether it comes to, again, business, financial, legal, operational aspects. It, so I, I think he's a smart guy, and I think he will And let's the face it, the Big Ten is a business entity. Yeah. The Big Ten Conference is a business. At mm-hmm. the end of the day, it's about making money. And there happens to be schools that operate in the business. But the Big Ten itself is a business entity. And I just, I look at it, Kevin, we talked about this idea during the football season. It can happen. Okay, so you have that one game in there that if you play that, could put you over the limit for the NCAA, right? Well, I'm sure there is a loophole somewhere in the NCAA bylaws that will allow you to add this game. And what's the worst case scenario? Oh, one less cupcake on the schedule that wouldn't matter for your power rankings anyway at the end of the year to get selected into the college football playoff. Whereas there's so much, there's so much time off too. These teams that know they're making the college football playoff have like a month off anyway, as it is. So you think adding one little semifinal game, it's going to help boost your resume, by the way. Like these teams that are legitimate and deserving of a college football playoff spot, you should welcome it because it adds another good win to your resume, potentially. So well, yeah. I just want to throw think that. about it, Kevin. So you have Ohio State, they win the division. Michigan finishes second because, let's say, Ohio State beat them during the regular season. There's one, yeah. two. Ohio State in the Big Ten championship game, Michigan left out. Probably left out of the – the college football playoff at that time. Now, you go across the other way, Wisconsin right now dominating over there. Iowa's had, you know, whatever. But let's let's say Wisconsin and Iowa are one two. And let's yeah. say for some re- somehow Wisconsin again is now ranked in the top ten. Yeah. So Michigan plays a Wisconsin team and let's say Iowa's ranked in the top twenty. I mean, I guess my the the one complaint you're gonna get is those number one seeds risk the college football playoff at that point. You know what? If you're that good, you're going to take care of business and win. Exactly. You're going to, and if you're, you're Wisconsin, going to take care of business and win. Yeah. If you're Wisconsin and you're ranked like eight, nine, and you pull off that one upset over number four Ohio State, is that enough to get you in? Some years it's not. If you beat Michigan, who's ranked 16th, and then you go out and beat Ohio State the next week, it's like, damn, they took care of business. They really showed they are the best team in the conference. They didn't just get lucky by being on the right side of the division and then pull off one upset. You have to win twice. And so if you're in the top ten and you win two marquee games back-to-back, that, that will show the committee, hey, we belong in your little four-team playoff here. Yeah, I, I really I don't see any disadvantage to it. The only thing that I could see that somebody will, would debate with us is, well, they, like, you're an Ohio State guy, Kevin. So Ohio State runs the table, undefeated season, going into what would be the Big Ten championship game. Now they've got to play an up-and-coming Nebraska team who finished second that's on fire at the end of the year. Yeah. Ohio State has nothing to gain, only everything to lose. But like I just right. said, if they're that good, they'll take care of business. Exactly. And if they lose to a second-place Nebraska team, then guess what? they weren't good enough to play in the college football championship then. That's the way I look at it. But they take care of business, take care of business. Maybe they move up in the ranking. Let's say they ran the table, but so did Alabama, so did Oklahoma. And Ohio State's actually ranked third. But now they beat a second-place team 
Then let's say Michigan upsets Wisconsin and they beat Michigan again. Do, do they vault to a number two or a number one seed? Possibly. I mean, there are so many advantages that I see from adding these two little simple games. And yeah. I don't think it would hurt anybody at all. And, and we, didn't think, even mean to, we didn't even mean to talk about this today, but hey, I'm glad we did. Now, my last thing is I think the SEC has a pretty similar problem. Um, Georgia is now becoming a power, and it's like, okay, it, it makes sense for Georgia to play Alabama or LSU every year. Um, but some years, like Georgia will finish 9-3, and three, and it's just like Alabama plays 9-3 and three Georgia or 10-2 and two Florida that's very weak offensively, and it's just like, whatever. You know, but if you add a semifinal game in there, it can make things a little more interesting. Um, you know, you get the true winner of your conference if you're taking the top four, um, as opposed to just, oh, hey, you're the top team in this random division that we created. You know, I think ago. it would add a lot of excitement to college football fans, yeah. especially Absolutely. for the ones that like the upsets. So you right. got like your Alabama and your Oklahomas, you know, your top teams. I just heard I just heard Troy Ding out there, uh, but yeah, it it absolutely adds to a potential Cinderella story. Um, you can have a team finish, I don't know, seven and five. Maybe that's pushing it. Eight and four, let's say, like Minnesota finishes eight and four, but they finish, you know, what six and two in conference. That's like well okay, you got the two seed out there in that division for the Big Ten. Now you have to play one seed Ohio State. Imagine Minnesota going to play Ohio State in a Big Ten semi game and pulling that upset. And then the next week they'd have to beat a Penn State or a Michigan State or a Michigan or a Wisconsin in the final. It, that'd be unbelievable. And what I just talked about, Troy, I heard you ding back in. You, <laughs> I told you about 20 time. minutes you're going to lose me. Yeah. That's pretty darn but close. talking about I was talking about like a Minnesota team finishing like eight and four, but like six and two and getting that two seed. You could have a Minnesota Cinderella type run where they beat Ohio state in the semi and then they play like a Michigan or a Wisconsin in the final. And it's like, Holy crap. Where did Minnesota come from? <laughs> they were just this random two seed and then bing, bing, a couple upsets later. And it's like, damn, <laughs> you know, it, that, that would be fun, especially for a team like Minnesota or any of those two seeds really. Um, it would be somewhat of a Cinderella type story. Probably not if you're like you know, but the naysayers will never let it happen because it hampers it hampers that ability to get to the college football playoffs. When I think well, and coaches happens, and coaches will say it's another game we're not getting paid for currently under a contract and stuff like that. So there are negative. I think I just think it would be pretty but, darn cool. That's all. Yeah. What else we got I agree. for the listeners today, youngster? You got to go gallivant with Mrs. Youngster here in about a half hour. I do. Um, there is something I want to get into um, eventually, not on this week's show, but the only thing I'll say is um, that I think it's cool that Kevin Warren is the first Power Five African American head conference commissioner. Um, I think it's cool that it's in the Big Ten. Um, there, there's a number of things that people will say about that one way or another. Um, I'm not, you know, necessarily saying positives, negatives, but just stuff about it in general. Um, so I, I think on next week's show, um, I can get into a topic, uh, Troy and I will get into a topic um, that I kind of have built up in my head about it. Um, but in short, I think it's cool. I think he's a smart guy. I think he will do a successful job at the end of the day. Um, so who am I, but I'm in favor of the hire. I, I, I think it's cool for the big 10. Um, and I think he's a smart guy, which at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Smart man, smart woman, smart alien. doesn't matter. I, I would want whoever to be in charge of the big 10 to be a smart individual and lead the big 10 to greener pastures, so to say. So that's all. Well, how I'll, uh, he's taken I'll... the reins of a pretty well-oiled machine right now. Yeah. I mean, you look at all the sports we talk about on this show, and there's national success. And we're talking about not just major sports, not just basketball, not just football. You know, we've talked about baseball, with Michigan getting to the College World Series, lacrosse. These are sports and that... wrestling. Like wrestling, yeah, wrestling, the Big Ten absolutely just dominates it. 
um, which we hardly ever we we bring up wrestling probably once a year, but Big Ten dominates wrestling. Yeah, so he's he's taken over a pretty well-oiled machine, and now he just needs to tune it up and make it just purr like a kid. But with that said, <laughs> youngster, hope everybody enjoyed the show today. Again, you can find us on a number of social media outlets. At Youngster Old Man is our Twitter handle for the show. And now, Kevin, we have parlayed that, not only to Twitter, but the same username for our Facebook page, which I really like, at Youngster Old Man. Plus, yes. our website, at youngsteroldman.home.blog. So as you can see, our brand, Youngster Old Man, even though this is Go Big or Go Home, Kevin and I are considered the Youngster and Old Man, and we do a lot of shows. So go, go check us out at Youngster Old Man. Find us on Twitter, find us on Facebook, and our website at youngsteroldman.home.blog. Hope you enjoyed the show today. We'll get back at you next week, same place, same time. Have a great day, everyone.